Greetings, members, one and all of the Salvation Nation, to the testing of physical gold and silver holdings by the big banks comes into question from the latest CME data. Let's explore! Yes, this comes to us from SK Wealth Academy, which is a news site that apparently does some um, some uh, investigative work behind the scenes with uh, precious metals manipulation and going back to the CME and uh, how a lot of futures and the like are traded and how they can be tested for the physical. And there's a lesson to be learned here in this article shared with me by Chuck and Plata. But there's a lot also to digest and to understand. And admittedly, there's a lot of it I don't get on the... Um, what happens behind the scenes and how the data are reported. So you have to be very careful with how you interpret the data. But uh, this uh, particular person here, this is obviously an opinion piece and it does touch on some things, including manipulation. And uh, But I believe there's one fundamental truth that I think we can all agree on, and that is uh, as far as trading in paper or in electronic markets, there's a lot more of the paper receipts for the actual physical in hand and that's what this is about the latest data reveal that bullion banks have clawed back considerable physical gold and silver losses in recent months using their own artificially engineered price drops to do so and now that is a charge that they're making that i've not seen any substantiation of as a, as far as um um, you, you know, bank wide or even multiple banks doing that. We've seen evidence of spoofing uh, with traders to make money off of it, but this is making a suggestion that it's basically covering up a, a much bigger thing. Um, it's been a couple of months since the author has dug into the CME gold and silver stops and issues report. Uh, just a couple of months ago, since the end of last year, he noted that the bullion banks had lost. 967,800 uh, physical ounces of gold from their house accounts. And then uh, there was a paywall in late September that they could book it, guaranteed, and fold that the latest reports would reveal that the bullion bankers had used the very dip in gold and silver spot in futures prices that they artificially manufactured to purchase considerable amounts of physical gold and physical silver. And sure enough, they can ski, they can see from the SK Wealth Academy year to date charts that were compiled below that the bullion bankers very significantly reduced their net losses in their house accounts from a couple of months ago from 967,800 ounces to just 578,000 ounces of gold of the 6th of October. However, a huge obstacle that the bullion bankers have been unable to completely resolve in the past couple of months remains the increasing number and increasing frequency of their clients to demand physical settlement for their precious metal futures contracts this year, unlike in years past. And this is the headline, I think, that I believe that is going to be interesting to see how this is tested that people are actually starting to demand physical settlement. And typically, that is, this is not tested, especially in this way, as the article admits here. Presumably, this shift in behavior of settlement means uh, is a consequence of better understanding of how bankers suppress gold and silver prices. Doing so, many of them have been arrested and indicted this year for doing, for doing it. But I think that's a bit of a stretch, or I don't know that that correlation really can be made. I just think it's a matter of the number of contracts um, compared to the physical and the paper. That is really what's outstanding here. The bankers are able to gain a decent ground in their client accounts as well, reducing the net cumulative loss of their combined house and client accounts since the end of the year from 1,938,500 ounces of gold as of a couple of months ago to a net loss of just 1,154,500 ounces of gold as of the 6th of October. 
representing a cumulative clawback of 784,000 physical ounces of gold in the combined house and client accounts. So here we can see from this chart, you know, with, especially with Goldman Sachs and JPM, the amount of stops, you know, especially from the what the clients for issue. Now, these are the biggest banks of all these here for sure, um, seeing that. Um, and the article goes on to say, unsurprisingly, the major reason for the significant improvement was the bank that has been at the center of the U.S. Department of Justice investigations in the gold and silver spoofing J.P. Morgan. Of the improvement in the reduction of net cumulative loss of physical gold ounces, J.P. Morgan bankers alone were responsible for reducing this amount by 716,900 ounces of gold, or more than 67% of the total clawback of 784,000 ounces. Um, but the thing is, is this clawback now is is uh, to make that correlation between the spoofing that J.P. Morgan was doing. That was done between 2008 or 2007 through 2016. That's what those charges were for. Nothing that happens has happened since then. So I don't know that you can make that tie uh, per se. Um, so, uh, but anyways, as the author has factored in the role of Goldman Sachs in the equation, J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs banks or bankers were responsible for the cumulative positions of gold improving by a net positive uh, 1.2 million ounces and a net 784,000 improvement for all bullion bank positions. In other words, other bullion banks have contributed a net negative effect to this number, and it is safe to say that only two players, J.P. Morgan and Goldman Sachs, were responsible for all the net positive improvement. This fact and loan merits CEO Jamie Dimon and former head of commodity trading for J.P. Morgan, Blythe Masters, being brought up in by the Department of Justice for questioning and the massive roles that J.P. Morgan banksters played and allegedly continue to play in manipulating gold futures prices. Well, J.P. Morgan also has the largest SLV um, holding it due. They're, they're kind of the custodian, per se. In addition, though, Goldman Sachs banksters, Goldman Sachs bankster, bankers have somehow escaped the heat of the spotlight of gold spoofing. It is clear that Goldman Sachs CEO David Solomon and former and current Goldman Sachs head of commodities Greg Agron, Guy Satenberg, and Jeffrey Curry should all, at a minimum, be questioned about their potential role in ongoing gold spoofing practices happening at Goldman Sachs. Well, that is if they're happening. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, he's assuming that they're happening, but we don't know for sure. But maybe they should be questioned. I don't know if there's any indication or investigation that goes on, but I don't know of one that's happening with Goldman Sachs. He says that, however, because clear signs of continued gold and silver spoofing in futures markets have continued this month, even as Department of Justice levied charges against arrested Deutsche Bank bankers for this very scam. And I think I covered that as well. The previous month, we all know that hell will freeze over before this will happen again. Well, I'd like to see the evidence that there is uh, these clear signs of continued gold and silver spoofing in markets. Um, because just because the Department of Justice officials levy charges against Deutsche Bank does not mean that it's happening at Goldman Sachs. Um, I think it's a bit of a stretch there to make there. But, and again, it could, but there needs to be an investigation before we can lay these claims out so confidently. But maybe he knows something I don't. I don't know. But um, but regards to the physical holdings of these banks, that's a different matter. And and I could see the author's point on trying to adjust prices so that you can buy more physical at a lower price so that you can um, have it in order to satisfy the uh, demands for the physical um, on the on the on the uh, electronic or paper form. Regarding silver, the bullion banks also very significantly scaled back their net losses in their house accounts from a couple of months ago from a net loss of 17.2 million physical ounces of silver to just 9.7 million. As this is the case with gold, bullion bankers were able to gain decent ground in their client accounts as well, reducing the net cumulative loss of their combined house and client accounts uh, 
a year from 27.2 million ounces as a couple of months ago to a net loss of 20.8 million. However, the net cumulative improvement in the bullion banker position in physical silver as of the past couple of months was not primarily due to their behavior of J.P. Morgan bankers, as was the case with gold. In physical silver markets, this net improvement was a group effort, they're saying. But J.P. Morgan holds the primary position of SLV, uh, but that's an exchange-traded fund. But I don't know with the futures and the like how that is done, but to, to be able to have the physical silver positions in that regard. <clears throat> He's saying that... Uh, is with the Bank of America, StoneX Financial, and Marco Reed bankers all playing significant roles in the overall improvement in the bullion bankers' physical silver position. So here we can see those highlighted here of the clients issued um, and stopped for those. Though the data above does not look particularly positive in either the house or the client accounts for the bullion banks, whose data the author highlighted at first glance, the key takeaway from the above data is not, the, is not the net loss of physical silver represented by the above data, but the fact that the current data above indicates a massive net clawback of physical silver, which means net reduction of silver losses, of physical silver losses. From just a couple of months ago, he referenced data of the proper perspective for the above data. It's a lot to kind of, it's very complex. I've looked at the CME website. And it's kind of tough. There's so many different factors and ways that data can be moved. You can pretty much <clears throat> make and say what you want. But there's a lot that I really don't understand. But one thing to take away from this, I think, is key. And I think what the author is saying here is, uh, you know, that they're trying to manipulate prices to be able to meet physical demand uh, that we've seen increasingly lately. And that could be the case. I don't know. Um, but it's something to think about. Even with the success in clawing back physical gold and silver losses due to the artificially manufactured price declines in futures markets, bankers always retain at their disposal their tool of raising initial margins in precious metal futures markets, a tool that always results in forced selling of gold and silver futures contracts. Recently, with the most heavily traded 100-ounce gold futures contracts, the CME raised initial margins a considerable 12.9% in the last month. With silver, they raised initial margins on the most heavily traded 5,000 ounce contracts by 13.2%. Keep in mind, silver is traded with these contracts or smaller contracts at 1,000 ounce and then 5,000 ounce. And respectively, initial raising initial margins on gold and silver futures contracts from $10,230 to $11,550 per contract and 14 $1,575 to $16,500 per contract. And again, this has been a steady tool deployed by bullion banks throughout 2020 to keep paper prices of gold and silver far below what they otherwise would be. And the CME has raised the initial margins on the most heavily traded future contracts, respectively by more than 133% and 188% within just the past 10 months. As the CME raised margins on silver futures a ridiculous five times by the massive 68 percent to just nine trading days between april 26 and may 9th in 2011 to collapse silver prices during the raging silver bull that carried silver prices to 50 dollars an ounce despite the already meteoric rises in the initial margins of u.s gold and silver futures contracts we will always have to remain vigilant for another 2011 style blitzkrieg in the future as long as gold and silver spoofing bankers remain free and none serve lengthy prison sentences for their behavior. Ultimately, should we be even a smidge surprised that bullion banks have clawed back considerable physical gold and silver losses in recent months during times when gold and silver prices in future markets are plummeting? Of course not. Should we expect bullion banks to continue clawing back physical gold and silver losses suffered earlier this year every time they engineer artificial price declines and futures markets moving forward? Of course. Uh, finally, since bullion banks have clawed back considerable losses of physical gold and silver for earlier this year, likely using a legitimate means spoofing to do so despite ongoing investigations being conducted by the U.S. Department of Justice and this illegal behavior, 
that clawbacks an endeavor that had required a significant output of energy and resources to accomplish are bullish to continue upwards gold and silver price trends despite a lot of chatter to the contrary that exists right now. Bankers simply would not be expending so much time and energy to claw back physical gold and silver if they thought prices would plummet in the future. And you know, and the thing is, is <clears throat> you know, you, you, there's, and this is a, is a pretty detailed and complex situation happening behind the scenes. And so the claims that the author makes here um, could be legitimate, um, but it just depends on the interpretation of the data. But I think the key takeaway for this and why I want to keep an open mind as knowing my position on, on manipulation, um, which still holds true um, until I actually see hard evidence. But the, the thing about this is that we know, um, I think that pretty much is undisputed unless somebody can find evidence to the contrary, that there is far more paper contracts and future contracts than there is the physical to back them up. And so when it's tested, well, that could be a case where some of these shenanigans could be going on so that they can accumulate more silver and gold to meet those settlements, and which is, I guess, where the stops are uh, taking place. But again, it's something that I'm not as familiar with. And arguably, uh, even the details of this article, your eyes kind of water over. But I wanted to share this, and I appreciate Chuck and Plata for sending it along with me and keep an open mind with it because... This claim, knowing that what we know about the markets and about the physical, um, you know, and it being tested, they're going to try and be desperate in order to satisfy those physical settlements, um, which is why there's that clawback is concerned. So this could be pretty big, and we'll see how it plays out. But again, I think this, it, it requires more investigation, and I think it's good that there has been some more of this settlement. In other words, people want to get the physical uh, to uh, be able to test these uh, these calls that they're making and these these uh, these contracts and orders of SLV and futures and the like. They want to get the physical more so than ever. Fascinating indeed. A multitude of gratitude to Chuck for sending this along to me and to you for watching and encourage you to please rate, share, comment, and subscribe.